coming up next to the stage. This next poet coming up to the stage is so cool. How cool is she? She's so cool that when she plays chess, all the squares want to be on her side. <laughs> and the other pieces just simply turn themselves in, which is just the right thing to do. She's so cool that tattoos want an image of her etched on them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Janet. <laughs> Noise. Thank you. I'm moving over here. And then hopefully John will give me his uh, phone since I have none for this. Hi! Hello, Happy New Year and such. I'm Janet, and I've heard that tattoos want my image on them. It's true. Thank you very much, John. Um, for uh, feature... Uh, what? The direct box is behind you there. The cord's on the ground there somewhere. I don't know what he's doing. Um, but uh, for a feature that I did uh, yesterday, um, Tom asked for being, things about being able to cope with the future and the things that are going to be happening and uh, and I came up with some of this stuff and John's going to join me on guitar, I don't know what's going to happen but I, I, oh it works and then there's a guitar um, and thank you very much. I won't even say titles, I'll just say the pieces. But I, <sighs> Walking through ruins, she saw desolation. She saw people saddened, ashes over everything. She walked through the rubble, reached her hand in, pulled out one brick, dusted it off. Everyone was saddened. Everything was ruined. She saw this brick and thought, what can I build? You think it's over, but this is your chance. Let's start anew. Let's start from scratch. Let's make the world as we see it could be. When the world lays in rubble and everything is gone, get out the bulldozer and haul out the trash. Because I'm here to tell you that we're starting anew. So stop asking for things and start working for things. It's time to make choices and it's time to lay claim to everything we've been blindly giving away. Because you know it's now time to take it all back. Take it in your own hands, people. Mold your own tools. If you're scared of someone taking charge in this country, well, take charge of yourself. And I'll take charge of me. Because when we define our role in the future, we will see the future we want and the future we need. We can let others define our future for us, or we can spread the word and we can make the difference. It concerns me when I see toddlers vying for their mommy's attention, yelling, to get their mom to look up from their smartphone. It confuses me when I hear that IBM Corp, the company that invented the PC, has decided that their employees should use Macintosh computers. <laughs> Riddle me this, Batman. Explain to me why the new decree is that all IBM employees will use Macs and not PCs. <laughs> It condemns us all when I see an ad on TV for a hero fighting enemies, killing people, escaping certain doom before saving humanity until the PlayStation logo appears, followed by the words, Greatness Awaits. <laughs> How confounding, because greatness awaits for those who didn't sit on those comfy cushions and play video games. If heroes act, they don't sit back and escape their reality by playing games of an alternate reality. They make their lives great. So, yes, for all you console junkies, greatness still awaits. 
It consumes me when the town I am from, the, the city I love, the one with the best architecture, the best skyline from the water, and wait a minute, the best tasting tap water too, and the best blues music, the best, the best cultural mix. It consumes my soul when the mayor calls Chicago a sanctuary city and further restricts gun rights of those who want to legally buy guns. Unlike the gangs, who in Chicago over Christmas weekend shot over 60 people. Of course, there were innocent bystanders. It, it concerns me. It, it confuses me. It confounds me. It consumes me. This is commonplace. This is a part of what they call evolution. Or maybe it's how the culture evolves by staring at screens with all the surface information I could ever want at their fingertips. Or maybe it's how the culture devolves by not having to remember a thing because you always have Google on that phone of yours that's smarter than you. So you can just stare at a screen instead of actually interacting with people. Because why would you want to interact with people when you could stare at a four-inch screen instead? I went to a bar and saw two men together at a table, both using their smartphones while facing each other instead of actually interacting with each other. And, well, wait a minute, isn't the point of actually going out in public to meet someone in the first place? Isn't the point of actually going to actually interact with them? Because the bar, the, the pub, the publican is a place where people went to meet up with each other to interact. But this past New Year's Eve, at a bar on Rainy Street, a group of people walked into a bar and asked if they had TVs so that they could watch a sports game. <laughs> you see, now this publican is becoming a place where people can all just want to pay attention to anything other than the people that they actually came with, or anyone else for that matter. This is your future. Because I remember back in the day when me and my friend Jason had our laptops at a bar with a bunch of friends and we would just transfer files to each other by putting our laptop sensors in front of each other. So yeah, I guess I was doing something geeky and stuff, but it was while I was in public and I was still interacting with actual people while I did it. And this is how we were cutting edge. <laughs> this is how we were rebellious, all without having to lose our connection to people. We look for a happy medium. I'm the woman who uses audio and video sampling in my performances. The woman who has her own name as a domain name, tons of CDs on iTunes, who runs an expansive online and print publishing corporation, incorporating YouTube and Vine videos, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even Pinterest, Tumblr, and Google+. Plus. But I don't know how many times I've been called a Luddite because I only recently got a smartphone. And you know, no one ever calls me, so what am I missing out on? <laughs> because maybe the problem is trying to come up with that happy balance, <laughs> with this ever-expanding technology being crammed on our throats that we're forced to feel the need for. Sure, we can always want something that's the latest and the newest, but we can forget that our phones used to cost less than $20 per household per month because now we always have to give up something in order to get something new. <laughs> we think we can have it both ways as we welcome the new millennium, but maybe the real key is that we all need to remember to strike that balance so that we don't lose what we loved about the past while embracing and throwing our arms around the future. <laughs> the future is ours. Just look before you leap so that you'll know that you'll be able to land on your own two feet and you'll always stay on top. Thank you. Give it up for Janet one more time, ladies and gentlemen.